So this is the MX Keys, Logitech's high-end productivity keyboard, priced in at $99 and it competes with other similar keyboards like Apple's Magic Keyboard. But ignoring the competition for a second, I'm the kind of guy who used a crappy $20 keyboard for years. So the MX Keys were my first legitimate keyboard purchase and I had a pretty fussy list of requirements. I wasn't interested in mechanical switches or RGB backlighting, and I wanted something that was simple, wireless, and minimal, all of which the MX Keys checks off. But for someone who may be on the fence about purchasing this product, especially when there are so many other good offerings on the market these days, I wanted to offer my own thoughts on this keyboard after having used it for a while now. So without further ado, here's the MX Keys review, three months later. When we think of a premium product, we often associate it with its design, and the MX keys are no exception to this. The body is constructed from metal, and you can feel it. This keyboard is a lot heavier than most other keyboards, and the keycaps are made of high quality ABS plastic. The design is heavily centered around a minimalist fashion, sporting a modest Logitech logo at the top, and there aren't any flashy features like RGB or colorful keycaps. It's a professional, non-offensive look. The height isn't adjustable, but the keyboard is low profile enough as to where a palm rest isn't necessary, although Logitech does sell their own version for $20 online. The keyboard itself is a 108 key layout with a full row of software adjustable function keys, a numpad, and special media keys, so if you're looking for a smaller keyboard, then sorry. The start and alt keys are labeled with its Mac counterpart for reverse compatibility, although Logitech does offer a Mac OS exclusive version of this keyboard. Logitech also includes these three switches that allow you to switch between three different connected devices, a feature it calls Easy Switch. Most of the time, I have the MX keys connected to just my PC, so while I never use this feature, it does work as intended. The design and typing experience of the MX keys are unique, but in a good way. If anything, the typing experience is a lot like its design, not offensive, and no gimmicks involved. From a user standpoint, typing on the keyboard is tactile, and it reminds me of typing on a laptop keyboard. The keys are a non-mechanical, scissor-switch style keyboard with very little travel, and the keycaps themselves have this spherical indentation, which Logitech says is ergonomically designed to match the natural shape of your fingertips. But when I first tried this, I thought it was a little weird to use, but after using them, I think this subtle difference actually does make typing on the MX keys comfortable. It also personally helped my typing accuracy because the bump almost directs your finger to the middle of the keycap, but I do notice that you have to apply just a little bit more force than usual compared to a regular scissor switch keyboard. The difference is really subtle though, so it's not an issue for short or long periods of typing, but I would be lying if I said the typing experience was exactly the same as a regular scissor switch. Also, latency between the keyboard is a non-issue using either Bluetooth or the USB-C receiver. And for anybody who's interested, here's a quick sound test. The MX Keys uses regular white backlighting with 8 adjustable layers of brightness, and there are ambient light sensors in the keyboard that will automatically turn on the backlighting in dark environments. Logitech says that the ambient backlighting is variable, and it adjusts itself based on the surroundings, but you can't turn the backlighting on if the surroundings are too bright or the battery is low. Throughout the three months I've used the keyboard, I've kept the backlighting off because that's just my preference. I'm usually working in a well-lit environment and I'd rather just preserve the extra battery life. And on the note of battery life, this is one of the MX key's strong points. This keyboard uses USB-C to charge and with backlighting on, this keyboard lasts only 10 days. But without the backlight, this little guy goes up to 20 weeks, which I can personally attest to because since buying this keyboard in December, I've charged this keyboard zero zero times. I haven't charged it once. In fact, the charging cable that the MX keys comes with is still in the packaging. You can also use the Logitech Options software to check the battery life of the keyboard and change the functions of the various function keys, but that's really all I'll get into with the software because I truthfully never use it. There is one glitch to this keyboard that I've noticed where if you press the volume up or volume down button too quickly, sometimes it'll cause the volume to increase or decrease continuously, and the only way to fix it is by turning the keyboard on and off again. Logitech addressed this with a firmware update, which I actually only found out about while researching for this video, so yeah. So who is this keyboard for? 
I think this keyboard is fantastic for people who want a no frills premium keyboard experience. The extra software features that they throw in there aren't really useful and I'm still annoyed at certain things like the volume glitch or the fact that Logitech doesn't include a USB-C unifying receiver. Come on Logitech, I know you can do it. But if you want a simple minimalist style keyboard for productivity, then this is still one of the best offerings on the market. And as for gamers, well, two words really. Please don't. Thanks for watching.